another cyber attack is spreading fast. What's going to happen when it reaches your laptop, server, or smartphone? If you've got Kaspersky Lab Internet Security, you don't have to worry one bit. Over the past two decades, Kaspersky has developed 30 layers of protection to stop the threats that others miss. It's one more reason Kaspersky is the world's most... Then cluster to me like moths around a flame. And if their wings burn, I know I'm not to blame. I'd like to help you in your struggle to be free. There must be 50 ways to leave. Hi, Mark. How you doing? Me. Yeah, trying to figure out this technology still. <laughs> Good luck. Apparently, I'm on here twice. Well, there's a man that has all the answers. Right back, fellas. <laughs> hey, Marco. I'm on here like twice. That's that's uh, me being confusing, possibly. Yeah. No. Sorry, I didn't notice I was pacing around. Uh, it's pretty hot out here. So I've got a new child. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. certainly is. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Everybody's still doing okay? Yeah, I have my mother here helping out. Oh, good for you. It's been, been pretty, pretty relaxed, peaceful. Well, the second one's always easier. I've already noticed. I'm, I'm enjoying <laughs> it. The, the slow pace. I don't know if it's uh, all the talking we do here and trying to slow things down. But yeah, once you take a step back, it's truly nothing to it. Yeah, it's, 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 not, a, it's not as dramatic as... Well, it is dramatic for, for mothers more than for fathers but that's true and she had she had a clean ride this time around and baby came out all right yeah right, so see so she's she's satisfied i'm satisfied that's good that's the main thing so. but i was mowing the lawn and i did just now finish the previous conversation you all had and yeah i, I felt it went from a, a two to a, a six or a seven there at the end uh, but i i enjoy the talk and <laughs> Like like the sharing. I like, I like the cafe idea in general. I, I assume that's mm -hmm. why you had the music playing, Mark, because mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to create your own cafe. So you kind of did there for me. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if it were my cafe, there'd be music. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay. So. Our Marco mindful AI is now a non static picture. No, he's present. Done. How are you feeling? Not bad. Okay. Could be worse. Well, Who's hey. Best? Getting better. Schlimmergeet immer, as the Germans say. <laughs> what does that one mean? Schlimmergeet immer is um, worse, worse is, is, worse is always is the, is the literal translation. It can always get worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no bottom to that barrel. <laughs> well, sometimes you just let it go. Yeah, just, that's what you have to do. It's like, okay, whatever. You know, this too shall pass. It, you know, it all does. <laughs> it just takes us a long while to realize that. I think. I didn't mind being sick. And I don't mind still being uh, kind of sick. It's changed my perspective, I think, yeah, in a positive yeah, way. Yeah. I think sickness is a good dose of reality. It's just, it's a very normal thing. And, you know, I mean, I hate it when it comes up, but what I do, I go off, I crawl into bed, and I just tell people, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not nice to be around when I'm, when I'm healthy, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they go, okay, well, if you're going to be miserable, oh. Then, you know, go off and do it, but 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 you have a lot of time for yourself. I'm, you know, I I I really appreciated that you used the word brood mm -hmm. <laughs> in your post because I, that you know that immediately resonates. I know you hate that word, Mark, but still, it really resonates oh. with you know. I think brooding. I think brooding is a good thing. 
It was the one nice thing I, I liked about living in Swabia because down there, this is a, this is a, like a subcultural German thing. Down there is the wine is one of the wine growing regions. And they, 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 it's one of the few areas in Germany where they can um, actually grow red wine. So the, in the, the grape that they use is called a Trollinger, and it's a, it's a descendant of a Tyrolean red grape that the Romans brought with them when they left Italy and, and invaded and came north. And so when they got to the southern part of Germany, which is uh, the, the wine growing region, they, they, they planted a lot of these. And the, the red wine you get is not these really dark, dry, French suicide wines. There, there is, it's a wine you can almost, it's a red wine you could almost read the newspaper through if you had a glass in your hand, but it's not a rosé. And it's, and it tends to be a little on the dry side, but since the weather and the climate's changing, they, they tend to get a little more, um, we say in English, sweet over here, they say deer. It's getting a little more deer as it goes along. But there's, but no decision is made in, in Swabia without gallons of this stuff being consumed. Mm -hmm. This is like, this is like the standard beverage in, 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 uh, in Bavaria. In, uh, in, in Baden-Württemberg, where we're around Stuttgart in particular. And they, they sell it in one liter bottles because the Swiss did a study to see how much wine can a, can a healthy, normal person drink every day without over, you know, damaging their liver and whatnot. And they found that a, an, an, an average healthy male, you know, like my, I, myself, can drink three quarter liters, which is the standard glass size down there. It's a quarter of a liter. It's called a fierdele, a fourth. And a man can drink three of them and a woman can drink one because women's livers process alcohol differently. So it's, it's, like, it's like the partner bottle to get a liter. And that's what you have, <laughs> that's what you have for dinner <laughs> along with your dinner. But they drink this red wine. And what they do, they have a word that's called Brudeln. And and to brudel is is to kind of sit there and mutter into your wine. <laughs> <laughs> and there in, in the little village next to where we lived, there was a there was a a gasthaus and it was called some brudeln. That's what it was for. It's a, it's a, you'd often see people sitting there just kind of looking into their wine glass and muttering things and sometimes people would sit with them and they would all mutter into the wine and every once in a while they would mutter, mutter to each other. So it's kind of like a way of life, not just, <laughs> not just something you do when you're sick. I just wanted you to know there, there are whole cultures built around it. Hmm. Well, <laughs> we call brooding. <laughs> it sounds like, uh, back to last conversation, same and similar. It sounds sim <laughs> similar to out here in the West, uh, crying in your beer. Okay, they say, yes, 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 see? <laughs> yeah. Just... We, we may swap out the beverage because of the circumstances around us, yeah. <laughs> but we tend to, I, I tend to think that we, we do the same kinds of things yes. the world over. You know. I believe you're correct. Yeah. Well, which, is, which is a rare occurrence. But out here, then we, you know, then yeah. we fight. We then we get into a row. <laughs> yeah. Bar. Well, the Swabians mutter a lot. <laughs> well, you know well, us I do some Americans. of my best thinking when I'm muttering or, or brooding. Or, yeah. I don't tend to mutter when I brood, though. There, there's something okay. something else that's going on uh, mm -hmm. when I'm in that kind of a state. It's like a decomposition process. It's like things are breaking down, and you're because you don't have the energy to project yourself, to extend yourself yep. into your projects and your commitments mm -hmm. and whatever else sustains the architecture of your world. It's like a collapse occurs and you get back to the, the kind of heart of like what the heart of feeling, you know, underneath your conceptual, um, mm -hmm. you know, engagements. And so, because it's easy to lose track of that, you know, it's easy to become, uh, entangled in or lost in uh, or just kind of trapped in all of your all of one's machinations all of one's um, uh, 
the one's world, like really one's world uh, in the philosophical sense of the world word. And uh, so this sickness for me was a little bit different because it didn't feel like a common cold. I mean, physiologically, it felt similar to, I don't even, similar to a, to a common cold, but what a, con what a cold has meant for me as I've grown older, I think I'm now middle age. I, I don't know if that, if there's an official age at which you become middle age, but I'm in my forties. So I think I'm, I'm not young. Exactly. Um, it's, it's relative, Mark. <laughs> right. I, um, but uh, uh, it's worse now, you know, because it's not just the runny nose and the coughing or whatever. It, the, the whole, the body aches in different places and a, a kind of veil of depression begins to uh, slink down, you know, over one's soul. It, it has a whole different dimensionality to it. And, 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 and more than that, it seems to carry a message. It seems to be to signifying something. There, there's more than just a virus, you know, that began multiplying in my, um, you know, in my lungs or in, in my respiratory cavities. There, it, it can't just be that. Um, although for my daughters, it seems just to be that. It just is a natural kind of byproduct of being a, a four-year-old is that you get sick and you get your parents sick. So mm. I can see the normalcy of it. And at the same time, I can't help but kind of entering into a hermeneutic circle uh, mm. with the condition and um, deriving uh, layers of meaning uh, that may or may not really uh, pertain, um, but some, but seem to actually seem to seem to to shift things, and so I'm I've I've been in the last couple of days, and particular particularly today, uh, I think in a um, in a sort of uh, sorting of the information and the re reconfiguring of what I understand myself to be doing, and um, really what how I understand my world, how I am being in my world, uh, and so. That's a that's a whole rabbit hole of a conversation, uh, but that's where I'm at. And I haven't said hi to Doug, and I'd like to. You look like you're in a utility shed or something. Yeah, I was mowing the lawn, and uh, it's a lot cooler in here than out there. <laughs> I was wanting to ask, how did you come to the name Vincent? For your for your son family family consensus at the at the table <laughs> that, that was our our first uh, name uh, for our first son I'm trying to get at uh, miles was kind of just a mutual name that we both liked the middle name is kind of the family name on her side of the family uh, this time around it's Vincent Roland so Vincent was decided at one breakfast uh, a few months ago. I said, eh. we were going through names just randomly, not through a book. Uh, most of it was Thomas the Train names that my son had decided to uh, insert, but Vincent was one that uh, we liked. So there's your, your depth there. <laughs> it, it was just kind of in the milieu, just kind of on your minds and books you were reading. Like, is there a connection to like historical figures like Van Gogh or... Uh, price or uh, we, we seem to subconsciously or unconsciously gravitate towards the artistic so we both have a thing for Vincent van Gogh and Miles Davis so there's but that wasn't kind of the, the main go-to name so it might have been a segment of the decision-making process but um, the middle name Roland is her uh, my wife's brother's name uh he passed away a few years ago so that's the namesake there mm -hmm. and one once a duff always a duff i suppose we're we're all boys so it seems to be expanding so maybe one day we'll marry a feminist or whatever's going to go on in 50 years on naming individuals so maybe a cyborg be some kind of like data i hope, packet I hope, <laughs> hope not cryptographic <laughs> will be the name <laughs> just kidding <laughs> I'm sure barcodes will still still be around during that time so. right. <laughs> I have to say though that I 
and my wife would, I think, uh, probably not agree with this from her perspective, but I found our second child to be harder than the first. Uh, and uh, the, the naming process or the actual? Naming. Not okay. the naming process, uh, <laughs> but the actual um, having in the world and mm -hmm. and readjusting uh, to and I don't that that probably was con had to do with where I was at in in my life. But having a second child, um, it it changes uh, the const the family constellation and the the energy dynamics uh, and. In our case, and this is not your case, so it, of course, could be, will be different. Um, we didn't have family around, so so it's just myself and, and Kayla. But when there's two versus one, uh, that means one of the adults can always get a break. When there's two and two, it doesn't work out. And it, it, you know, in, in in our case, we have you know work commitments, we have to make a living, etc. Uh, and so the stress of adding in um, another being into the mix of, you know, who, who we're supporting and kind of who we're shepherding uh, on our little spaceship. Uh, mm -hmm. I found that to be very hard. At least for, for like a solid year, I was just like in, in a kind of death grip, psychological death grip lock with trying to, you know, sort it all out and work it all out and, and get through it all. And then mm -hmm. that, dis that, that softened uh, over time. Uh, but uh, and, and it's not the same radical like joyous um, leap into a new kind of life either because you already have a kid you know what it's like so you, it's not a first that's not to say that the child is less special or less loved or anything like that but it, it, it's not the same event yeah. in, the, in, in one's life which, which can offset the stresses uh, of be, being a parent, you know, when you're first a parent, the, the joy kind of makes up for the loss of sleep and, and you know, other other stresses. Um, but not, and this is not to say that our second daughter was not joyful because she <laughs> was very joyful. But uh, it's more of a kind of cumulative because it's like adding to joy instead of a new kind of joy. Uh, so, well, I, I consider myself a brooder as well. Um, more so a mumbler than a mutterer, but wow. uh, that's that's a different story. But so I've kind of muttered into the future of oh, what's what could possibly happen. That's that's one of my games I play with myself and in any situation, mostly financial or future living whatevers. Um, so there's going to be a gap. My my mother's leaving tomorrow. Um, I. I my grandmother would normally, or great grandmother would normally assist, but she just had knee surgery. So we're assisting her as well. So yeah, my burden aspect will be high. So my creativity and output will probably go down. And I, I know I will be stressed and, and mumbling <laughs> and muttering in the halls occasionally. Uh, but her family, which is going to be another episode in itself, her parents will be coming over here um, as a permanent residents living within our home, which I've noticed, noted as somewhat small. I mean, they have their own room and all that, but, and I'm, I'm very welcoming. I'm very friendly and family oriented, but I've come to love my, my personal bubble and my, my certain space in the room and uh, it will be occupied. So that the shed might be the, <laughs> the best I've got, it, but that, that's going to be overtaken soon as well with stuff coming out of the house. And, um, so we can make room for them and not have our guest room as a storage room. So I'm, I'm kind of with Mark, um, though I'm not going to abandon any wives or uh, kids or anything like that anytime soon. Um, I, I kind of want to be the single fella. And I, I didn't mean it like any of that. <laughs> I, I meant... Are you implying? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's saying he prefers his solitude over the family life. And uh, I don't know. I don't know the gap between you having a family and where you are now. So I don't want to in interpret any story there. But uh, I I'm not going to be going anywhere for better or for worse. I suppose uh, is all I was getting at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. it's. A, I think it's really. Um, I'm going to use the word essential. Maybe it's not the right word uh, to have something like 
a private retreat, mm -hmm. like the so-called man cave. Uh, that that's a deep philosophical, you know, and uh, um, essen essential archetype. And but it, but having a place to go to, to brood, to mutter, to w whatever you need to do, uh, for me has been very important. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, I, you know, was going to go nuts and. You know, out of that desperation, out of that, um, uh, well, heart, you know, terror of. <laughs> yeah. Well, essentially, what you're sitting in right now is that the actual physical formation that you made as a result of needing that space. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And this is this is why. By the way, uh, I think Sloterdijk is really right, <laughs> and like in his fundamental philosophical formulation of the sphere. Uh, it it makes a lot of sense, uh, and it's not necessarily geometrically the shape of the universe, but I think that there's, uh, in my experience, we have a drive to be in bubbles, and they don't have to be solitary bubbles. Like I think he's also right that a bubble is never you're never alone. There's always some like who are you muttering to? Who 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 are you? There's there's always some otherness like inside of your bubble. But that's good. Uh, that, that's you. You kind of want the space to have this, um, uh, like primordial, like otherness, like this this dialogue that you can't have with anybody else, uh, and that it's too noisy in your house, and there's too much screaming or crying or other um, antics, you know, going on to allow that dialogue to take place. Uh, I, I think that part of what our bubbles and our man caves, men caves. Uh, do and I think women have similar, um, you know, corresponding structures. Uh, and not, I don't want to be literal, um, uh, you know, um, dualistic about it. Um, but yeah, it, 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 just, just, just a reflection, I guess. I'm not, I'm not trying to give advice or anything like that. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's just something that I, I think about a lot because. Uh, when when one doesn't have access to that, you go nuts. You know, you you actually start going nuts. And so, mm -hmm. I note that everyone here has their man cave, uh, even John, uh, mm -hmm. Davis. And so this is where we retreat to. And then from here we have this kind of meta conversation, like uh, between bubbles. It's like bubble to bubble uh, trans transaction. Well, let me just add for the record that I didn't get mine until I was 65. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I grew up sharing a room with three brothers. And so, and we had two double beds. We were, we had a, an extremely small house for a five person family. And so I, I learned very early on, and I understand what you're saying about Sloterdijk and I agree with the principle that's behind it. The only thing I don't like about it is he takes a million words to say that can be said in 10. So, but, but the point is, but the, but the point is absolutely correct. And I agree with him in that because I learned very early on how to, how to separate out my own space, if you will, where, that I needed to go to, that we all need to go to in order to sort things out. That's what we do when we brood or whatever. We, we, we do a lot of sorting and sifting and, Sometimes we mutter and sometimes we cry in our beer and sometimes we actually find someone who's willing to listen for 30 seconds, you know, but, but w we do that. And, and, you know, when I was in college, I lived in a fraternity house and there was always utter chaos. So you just find a way to do it. You find other, other means, but I, I was always good at it because I can block out a lot of what's coming from the outside simply because I had to start at a very early age blocking out. So, it doesn't bother me where other people are going, I'm going to go insane if that kid screams again. I go, what kids who's screaming? <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't hear it <laughs> because I've, I've learned to tune that out there. You know, there are essential sounds and non-essential sounds, you know, and we all find ways to do that, but, but it's, and it's good to find that. I'm, I'm very appreciative of the fact that a lot of people find these spaces, literal spaces just like this earlier. So that, that you have time to do that, you can physically withdraw because it helps remind you that's what you're doing. Otherwise, it's all very abstract, mm -hmm. and uh, you just kind of have to 
you get you can get lost in the crowd, but sometimes that's not a bad thing. When other people go, well, where are you? I go, well, I'm not here. Just, you know, my body's here. I can't move my body. That's not, you know, but I'm not here, and that and and that's something we have to le- have to learn to do too. You know. <laughs> But I get sent to my room too, so I'm done. <laughs> what, go to your room. Huh? Okay. <laughs> I've longed for the day that somebody would tell me to go to my room. <laughs> it's like your second childhood. Yeah, it is. Well, <laughs> yeah, or third. <laughs> I hear the birds uh, chirping somewhere. Right there. They're out here. Yeah, he's out mowing the lawn. <laughs> Not any longer. <laughs> I, I actually had to correct the maze that I made the other day. Uh, it was up so high because I skipped the two or three weeks. And I'm, I'm an anti-mower, mm. uh, to say the least. So I, I made a nice maze for my son and my mom <laughs> to go exploring. But that doesn't last long. My mom is uh, has OCD, so she... She's suggesting, like, oh, I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll do this. I'll do that. Like, okay, I understand. I'll, I'll do this. That's my chore today. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't worry about it. And for 15 minutes after I'm doing something else, she's uh, jumping on the task. Um, yeah, I'm really interested in that, that shared space while still being in your own bubble. Um, like I'm, I'm an expert at being in my own bubble just from being a quiet person my whole life. I can either. I I use the metaphor undercover agent, but um, Mm -hmm. I'm really trying to blow my cover in a certain sense. Like, like, hey, I'm I'm right here, but not demanding attention. I just want to find that space in between the, oh, the weather's nice today. Yeah, oh, this sucks. It's raining. And what we do here. So at any time, I wish to have that chance to fuse our bubbles, so to speak. and that's one reason I'm accepting of her parents coming in. Um, I, I, I know they're not going to impede or worry about mowing the lawn in a certain sense, as my parents would. So that aspect of it, there's not going to be, it'll be pretty laid back. It, it'll be slow time living. Um, when, I, when I actually read the Aro Bendo's Life Divine the first time, I took it to the Philippines when I was there for uh, a month and a half. Um, while she was, she had to go back overseas after working here for a couple of years on a work visa. And so I had a lot of downtime. There's not much going on there besides hanging out. Um, so I sat and read all the time and looked around and noticed that everybody else was just sitting around. Uh, if they weren't talking at the, what, what, what was the term for the communal kind of center, Ed? Gestamtisch. <laughs> yeah, they weren't at their Filipino gestamtisch. They mm-hmm. they were sitting at home, just kind of taking it easy from the heat. Uh, but they weren't necessarily reading or trying to cram as much as they could in their minds as um, no, some people no. like to do. And yeah, it was, it was an interesting. Like I, I would have been extremely bored if I didn't have something to read or something to. Like I, I went out and walked around and did all that, but to just. And I can sit for a certain amount of time, but to actually be there and do nothing um, is a, a strange thing. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to have them come over here, live a new life, and see how all this kind of mixes together here at the house. Mm-hmm. I, I was guessing it's going to be a partic- it will be something of a challenge for them. For them, because- yes. Yeah, there's, because, there's quite a community, a Filipino yeah. community that helps. But well, that well, yes and no. See, I'm living in a very rural area of Germany now. I used to live in a city. I I grew up in a small town, kind of thing. But people who are used to to let's say s- slow paced rural living. Which I hear you because I see that a lot of places that, that I've gone here in Europe as well. You find a lot of it in Greece, mm-hmm. you find a lot of it in, in Italy, where you see people sitting for hours on end on a very hard surface. It could be a wooden chair, a crate out in front of a store, you know, things that 
that would just drive my butt insane within you know an hour and they can, they will sit there for hours they're not reading they're not doing things that i would be doing because i'm always filling my mind i've always i i sometimes ask myself you said you know i would be bored you would be bored but they're but i don't think these people are bored when they're with this they can they can sit they can sit for long periods of time i don't know what they do i know that greek men tend to tend to play with beads they have caught and cumbaloid and they, they get very adept at fingering these beads. And it, it is a time passer, but it's also, it's also an attention focuser. It's almost like a meditation that, that, that takes place. There are other people that will, will actually run through a rosary. I, I've been in Istanbul, there were lots of folks sitting in front of their shops where no one ever came, everybody had a shop. And no one ever went in and no one ever came out. And they sat, they sat for hours in front of these shops running through the, the, their beads. And they're, you know, much like uh, Catholics in many areas will run through their rosary. And sometimes they are praying when they're doing it and sometimes they're not. And they, they could do that. And, and I was fascinated that, that this is possible because I, I, I couldn't imagine myself doing that. And, and then you try to. So I, you know, I get on the next street vendor. I get myself some comboloid and I go sit in the marketplace like the rest of these people. I'm going to go, I'm literally on the verge of insanity after an hour. And, and these people do seem to, to deal with this in a whole different way. But then the third or fourth time you do it, you start, there's a, there's a certain attractiveness to that. You know, that one of the things I don't get to do when I'm here is just go sit in the porch. And I'd really, really love to just go sit on the porch. I don't want anybody coming out and asking me why I'm sitting there. I don't want anybody coming out and asking me if I want another cup of coffee. And I don't want, you know, I don't even have, I just want to sit. And, and, but I don't know how to sit. I, I'm, I have to figure that out yet. That would be like a, a project for me. But, but these folks have actually learned to sit. And, and, and I think that there's, there's probably a great advantage to that. You have a Filipino community, but that means you go somewhere and there's interaction. People that are always in that same little community when they're sitting around, this is the Brudler and the Swabian Gosta. It could be that the same four people are sitting at the same table for the last 40 years, <laughs> and they might have exchanged 40 words with one another in that time and are a little offended that people are getting so close. <laughs> because because they, just, they just want that space to brood. You see, and 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 as long as we all acknowledge that that's what we're doing around the table, everybody's fine. People in northern Germany get to be that way too, and you know, get try to get three or four, get a whole sentence out of somebody from East Frisia is a challenge. Everything is a one-word answer. They don't even say Guten Morgen up there. You know, that's 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 five syllables. No, it's just moin. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> And when you go and see them in the evening, they say moin. <laughs> they don't even change the time of day. It's just always the same. And that's it. Because there's a certain, there's this non-verbality that I just find absolutely fascinating. Because there's no wasted words. You know, the, never, there's never a wasted word on anything. You know, it's just whatever it is, it's as short and as concise as it can be. And it's to the point and it's relevant. And that's, that's a whole different kind of thing. And they'll be in a household where in their households, they're probably more active because there are either multi-generational configurations that tends to be more the case in rural areas otherwise. And so there's a certain accepted level of interaction and activity that isn't outside. But when I go outside, that changes. But I don't go outside all that often because there's nowhere to go in that. But here, they might. Now, that's why I'm not saying it'd be a problem. I don't think it will be. I think we'll all be very happy together because you all understand and love one another. That's always a help. You know, there's nothing worse than having five people in a household that don't, don't like each other. You know, but um, <laughs> but it's a but it's a it's a different. The United States is just a different dynamic. It's just a different place. You know, it's even even rural or quasi-rural America where I grew up is not like rural Germany, although it's rural. And that they share, but, but it's a different kind of dynamic that's involved. 
simply because we just have fewer people around us all the time. You know? Well, I think it's it's forgotten that this country, for the most part, is is a few hundred years old, mm-hmm. whereas anywhere else, particularly Europe, the Middle East, Africa, families, generations have been there for thousands and thousands <laughs> and thousands of years. And so there's a history that goes back. We can't even conceive of that here in the, and particularly out here west. At least on the east, I've been there a few hundred years. But out here in the west, we're like 150 years old. That's it, except for the first Americans. Yeah. Uh, they don't talk much either. <laughs> 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 if, you, if you've ever been on a reservation, I, it's pretty yeah. scary. Yeah. It can be scary. <laughs> they look at you like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, people forget that. That, mm-hmm. you know, over in the rest, a lot of parts of the world, the people have been there, like Afghanistan. We go, you know, we go there and we think, well, nothing to it. Those people have been, they have grudges and family feuds and whatever for thousands of years. They've been hating on the, these people. <laughs> the Hatfields and McCoys are nothing by comparison. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I, it's got to, and that's the environment they grow up in. And, and this this country is... A, really brand new and we're just even where where marco and i live now he lives in a little town but it's doubled or tripled in size in the last what marco how long have you been here 30 years or so yeah sure i've been here 10 years but longmont has been growing very quickly uh including boulder this whole all the whole colorado front range i think has had you know, a million people come in in the last I'm t- I don't have the numbers, but uh, yeah. But yeah, but prior to, there was nothing. Mm-hmm. And, and Longmont was, was a real, just a rural uh, farming community. It was a cow town, and now we've got a Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, at the risk of going meta theoretical, uh, I think that there's something to here to do with uh, the dynamics of settlement uh, and the, the psychology that goes along with pe- with the people or with groups when they've been in a place for a long enough time that they basically feel at ease there, that, that, that there's some kind of um, culture, uh, some kind of world, like a sphere uh, established uh, there. Uh, and you know that mentality tends to pertain to old world kind of cultures, uh, but out of all those out of those cultures, we've also had you know the the modern age arise with a totally different kind of mentality, a non settled mentality, a, an outward projecting uh, drive, uh, a mania even you know to find new places, uh, you know colonize uh, new lands. Uh, appropriate resources, etc. This is what we're reading about now. It's part, part of what's on my mind. We're reading about it in uh, Sloterdijk, Globes, his philosophical history of globalization. And, uh, and you know, there, there's a certain kind of madness, I think, that, that drives people. Uh, and, and particularly when they're, they're, they're not settled, when they don't feel at home, uh, there's this... Uh, like um, unquenchable need, it seems, to achieve that that peace of mind or whatever it is that that you get when you know when you're just at home, when you're able to sit on the porch or take your time, uh, when you don't have to struggle uh, for for survival, um, when you, know, you feel inherently without the concept of it, the sociological or political concept, you have a, a, a safety net. Uh, and I'm not saying that that's a, tr- that, that's a universal truth, uh, because I mean, part of, I think, 
the human experience has been constant disruption. Uh, there's periods of relative stability, periods of settlement, but what ends up happening is that you know those spheres collapse. There's either from internal uh, forces or from external incursions, uh, environmental um, depletion, I mean, all kinds of things end up rupturing you know the the, the spheres that, that that are settled. And in Sloterdijk's theory, you know this sets off a kind of immune reaction. It's a and, and the attempt to build bigger spheres, more protected uh, spheres, uh, to find other uh, homelands, uh, and to establish, you know, f- once and for all, if you will, um, the, the the place, you know, where one can finally relax and just be. Uh, and I mean, one of the things just to reflect a bit more on, on Sloterdijk that that I've been brooding on has been how has been the, how driven all of this is all of this world building everything that we have here in in, in the west in america um and even in one in my own life uh how driven it is by just sheer madness just sheer just, sh- just sheer reaction to these ancient you know traumas of displacement and of um loss, destruction, etc. And and so we're in these these cycles and these cycles within cycles of uh, seeking uh, that containment, seeking that kind of sphere of um, of contentment, and, and never being able to procure it on a permanent basis, um, but always seeking for those uh, structures or those kind of objects, technological, financial, scientific, artistic, you name it sexual, like in every domain that could somehow plug the holes in our, in our spheres, plug the, you know, the gaps in, in our, um, in our, you know, sense of, of wholeness. And it's just so crazy because I don't like, how, how do you get out of those cycles? How do you get out of the, the, you know, the immunological kind of, uh, you know, si- um, circle, uh, where you're reacting based on, things you're not even aware of that, that, you know, happened in your, your culture, your family history, your, you know, your social group history, whatever, and that are acting out in the ways that you conduct your life. Uh, I, I, until, until you have clarity on what the whole process is, um, it, it's, uh, it's like you're in a, um, this is part of what I've been brooding on. It's, it's like you're, you're in a, in a sort of seizure of being. You know, you're you're in a crisis of being. Uh, y- you have to construct a world and somehow. You have to construct a shell, a sphere, a uh, container, and uh, and the world doesn't cooperate <laughs> with you in that process. Uh, it's it's. Um, I mean, some people may cooperate, and some you know there there are certainly uh, social structures, you know, modern that that are, and all you know, in all times that are that are designed to help you do that. But uh, when it when those are breaking down, as they are now, I think in our world, um, it I think throws uh, people like us, um, and I think generation generationally it makes a difference too, like where you are in your life. If you're retired and you have a pension or social security, or whatever, it's not a, it doesn't you know have the same um, sense of urgency, perhaps. Um, but it's like this: what we, they call the what we call the rat race. Um, it's like rat, you know, it's rats all the way down. Rat race. Down. It's rats all the way down. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we just came up with a new metaphor. Yeah, it is. It's rats all the way down. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> I, I think there are different people personalities in in all of these no matter the sphere the group the globe whatever you want to call it community you have all these not everyone is is seeking the same thing some people are are driven really driven to to push out and and those are your extroverts and then there are other people who, who, who want that quiet place 
and and all the the change and the confusion really stresses them out where some people thrive on it and and that happens no matter where you are you get a certain number of people and you're going to have all different types and some are going to some are going to venture forth and change and colonize whatever you want to call it and and others don't want any part of that uh it's if we weren't constructed that way we'd still be in everybody still be in caves uh but the uh, some people needed to go forth and if it weren't for the other types of people who who kind of reined them in from time to time we would have extincted because <laughs> <laughs> some people are flat out nuts when it comes to uh risky behavior so it, it, but now i think yeah it's it's more crazy than ever because there are no territorial barriers anymore it's just like madness your metapsychosis is <laughs> you know there yeah you have to put yourself in a little pod but even that i mean you're connected to the to the world it's and and, and a lot of people that seriously stresses out uh if you can't find your your uh, uh, book i read he calls it finding your pond a place that fits who you are and and certainly now we have at least some people here in the america we have the freedom to move about and search for uh a place that you kind of fit into uh but yeah, then w- we go back to to uh, i really liked uh, zachary's paper uh, uh you have to find out who you are first and then you can look for a place that sort of fits you and that's ideal and and uh, you know there's your self actualized person they're very rare mm-hmm. who can uh, put that all together and and now it's just i went yesterday i went to a uh, a service for a, a friend of mine whose mother just died she was 98 but she was b- born here in colorado and and he was telling stories about her life and the different places she lived here in colorado and the different jobs she did it was a huge a big family and a big uh reception and it was in a very very swank condo uh the owner who who started HBO so the place is like nuts and and a hundred people at least and they were all connected to this this she was a small tiny woman Italian lots of great food uh but in just her li- one lifetime the changes in in Colorado were just crazy absolute crazy uh and she she managed it uh and was always uh, I've known her for like 50 years she'd come up to uh when we were in college together she'd come up and cook lasagna for the for the crew and we were a motley terrible crew and she'd come up and and cook and that would be the only good meal we'd have for a month <laughs> uh but it was uh, you know and people people are just uh it's it's nice to have an anchor and it seems like the anchors today are just everybody's at drift you know who am i where do i fit in except yeah some of us who are retired and you know just taking it easy <laughs> i i i i'm interested doug uh, in it's a it's a big decision now to to bring other people into the world and and it's it seems to me it's optimistic that you you know things are going to be great 
uh, but boy, uh, <laughs> some of the some of the conversations here on the cafe, some of these people are just like doom and gloom. Uh, and I would, you know, maybe it's age related, but I I don't see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. I I would like to be a grandparent, I think, but my word, uh, what's it going to be like in 50 years, 25 years? Ooh. There's, there's hundred directions to take this. And I've got 7% battery life on this phone. So I'll, I'll probably let it just uh, fizzle out here in a second. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in I, the last conversation you talked, Mark, about yeah, your own kind of personal wood wood spot spot in the forest or wherever you might be and amongst the mountains, uh, your own outdoor pod with a, a home you you built or at least did most of the work. I can't remember. Um, I haven't talked to you enough about that, but I'm just yeah here in America, like you're saying, there's enough chance to kind of have that mentality of going out and seeking like your your permanent spot in a certain sense that gives you enough space to be at one with who you are or any of that. Uh, then we have the next generation uh, from Mark. We go to Marcos who who says, well, I don't necessarily need that spot. I just need a pod. <laughs> and now, now I see my kids, uh, the next generation um, saying, well, I don't necessarily need a pod. It, it might be the virtual reality kind of world they go into. They're going to go to a Cosmos Cafe, and they'll actually be sitting down in a physical place. They'll be sharing music. They'll have that actual physical. Um, of course, it's not going to be ideal, but that that will be. This is not ideal what we're doing here, but it's the next best thing supposedly. Um, so I, I, I see. I guess going off of having a child in this world. That's another thing I've mumbled and muttered about many times that one was enough <laughs> and didn't think two would come around, but um, we were, we were prepared and prepared for it. And if you sit there and think about it the whole time, then you're not busy living the, the actual experience. And you know, there's the younger generation that wants to change the world and the, the older generation has already, uh, or at least it's been discussed here with a few others where we've approached kind of that mentality. Well, we'll, we'll uh, one example is Ed and the multiple sandboxes we have to play in. And I'm sitting here saying, well, why not just dump sand everywhere? And we can all kind of be in one big group, but um, it's not going to work out that way. And we do need our separate sandboxes. We do need our, our, rooms to ourselves, our spaces to ourselves. And it, a lot of the conversation here has come down to, and the conversation all around us and all that we read. Um, next week, you said Terry Patton's coming around. So he's, he's got something to say about what, what we are, where, we, where we've been and uh, where we're going with this whole community realm. And it, it's a, it's it's on everybody's mind. I, it might have always been that way. I've, I've noticed that <laughs> the more I sit and think about it and everything I've read, that if they're halfway concerned or not just completely out of it, they're going to see that there's a world out there that needs to be uh, worked with in some sense. So I'm I'm at two percent now, so I'll stop there. <laughs> That's my two percent. <laughs> <laughs> the race against the race against the battery. Well, you, you say something interesting, Doug. Uh, you, there's a world, a world out there. I think that's part of like that's kind of at the crux of the issue is whether there's a world or whether there's 
7 billion worlds. Um, I guess it could, doesn't have to be either or exactly. Um, but if, if there isn't a recognition of a common world, then I think we're in trouble. Um, what's the world going to be like in 50 years? You know, like the, <laughs> what I think find interesting about that equation is that if we're thinking about technological change and you know, pace of novelty in, you know, as you might measure it in some objective metrics, you know, like processor speed or, um, sing, you know, events in the news or, um, ec you know, economic growth or whatever, uh, 50 years of future time is not the same as 50 years as past time. So the amount of change from 1950 to 2000 is a fraction of the amount of change in an exponential curve from 2000 to 2050. Um, and that makes it unimaginable. You know, that makes it a kind of, if not a singularity phenomenon, uh, a, um, a type of asymptotic kind of phenomena or, or experience, um, which I think is part of like the challenge of, of our time. Like we have to come to, you know, we have to reckon with um, a process that is um, culminating in this, in a way, like it, it, you know, if something is unsustainable, right, if a pro, then it will not by definition not sustain if, and so if the analysis of our situation is that, this rate of change, this rate of resource usage, you know, this trend, uh, these trend lines in, in events and, and in, you know, various measures of, you know, planetary, ecological, social, political, economic uh, reality. If those continue on that curve, then, uh, you know, the, <laughs> what, uh, how, we have to, we have to reckon with the unknown, you know, with the tremendously powerful unknown that that, that, that means. Uh, I think this is part of Terry's uh, story, uh, which we'll talk about next, next week a bit, this mm -hmm. sense, this meta crisis, this, this, I'm not, you know, I'm not calling it singularity because I don't want to get into a discussion about that exactly, but uh, it has those, that, those kinds of features. And, you know, the question of what will it mean to be a human being in a, you know, post-crescendo, post, you know, uh, singularity in an exponential environment. I, uh, you know, I'm very sympathetic to the humanist point of view, but I, I, I can't um, deny, deny or the, I think... Um, philosophical like promise no, no that's the wrong word it's not promise it's just clarity or something like of the transhuman idea and and i and by transhuman i, I want to be careful because i don't mean ray kurzweil silicon valley uh um kind of techno centric uh form of transhumanism i mean i think that we have to imagine what it means for the human really to be infinite and I think our conceptions of the human historically have been kind of conditioned by uh, traditional and modern ideologies uh, and uh, may not survive uh, this convergence of exponential trends. And so that doesn't mean the human doesn't survive, but I think the human gets, you know, gets taken up into something different gets taken up into this trans space. Uh, and, and I don't think that that's a choice exactly. You know, like globalization is not a choice for anybody. Even if you're on a little island in the middle of the Pacific, mm -hmm. never, you know, saw an iPhone or whatever, uh, all everything that's going on on the globe affects you. And at any moment, you know, you could have a drone fly over your island and, <laughs> you know, or, or uh, you know, as happened, uh, uh, the major, you know, military empire of, of the time decide they want to, you know, look, uh, be looking for a place to test their nuclear weapons. Um, mm -hmm. That happened. Uh, and, 
so how can you know if is there any escape you know from from this uh, metastasizing pro <laughs> this metastasizing process globalization is one phase of it right mm -hmm. we're globalized now but this ain't done and mm -hmm. so you know i i would like to envision a, a few a, a, a positive future a positive vision for how that could go but i'm not sure that that can be conceived at the global level uh i i think that it has to, we need different scales we have to we have to sort of see um discern different scales of action or different scales of like world uh, arranging uh and that is you know that's an intellectual project i think that you know remains to be um really like advanced um i think sloterdijk is kind of getting there but but there are some ways that he really that I, I, we're going to talk about it on thursday um I'm not sure his conclusions are really powerful enough. I don't think they're really going to serve. Um, but the analysis to me is very valuable. L let me add something to that. There's a, there's a phrase I heard a long time ago. It's been haunting me ever since. And I, I hated it when I heard it. And I loved it ever since. And I, I always change my attitude towards it. And it's the more things change, the more they stay the same. And... I know I've mentioned it a couple of times, but I'm trying to learn biblical Hebrew. So I have my nose stuck in the Old Testament a lot. And I'm, I'm trying to, to follow what, what, what's being said. I'm trying to understand what's going on from these goat herders in the Middle East where there's nothing and no water for ever. And what you've just described, Marco, is exactly what I'm reading there. It's it's the same thing. They were it wasn't the pace wasn't the same, but the impact was just was just as devastating. When when the Romans swept through Palestine and imposed their order on the world, it was it's no different than what America's doing in that regard. Anybody could be zapped at any time, be it a drone or being nailed to a cross. You know, hundreds of thousands of people were just offed or some ideal that others never really understood. But at the heart of it all, down, deep down, what we've just been talking about with our families and friends and, and, and how do you name a kid? That, that, that hasn't changed. That's still the same. It's still an issue. It's still important. It still matters. And it's, and it's what gives meaning to where we are when we are, I've always, I've said a lot of times, you 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 are never anywhere other than where you are. You're just there, regardless of what might be around you or what you perceive is around you or how you react to what's around you. You're still just there, and you deal with what's there. And I don't I don't really see. And I I understand this this whole technological thing, on the one hand, but I I'm having trouble seeing and understanding where it's really different. You know, I, well, I, I, I'm very sympathetic to your, to your, to what you're saying. You know, you, you, you've, you've mentioned a couple of times how, how things are qualitatively different than they were before. I haven't found it yet. I haven't, I don't reject it. I'm not saying, oh no, he, nah, he's full of shit. I'm still looking for that, but I'm, but I'm not, I'm not sure that that what, that's what, what matters. Well, the, the difference is if I, if I, understand Marco's position is that even though, okay, if you were facing, say, 2,000 years ago in one of those cities in the mm -hmm. Rome, who, whoever came and started killing people, that remains the same, that part of it. But back then, or anywhere prior to, to now, you could always, or the possibility was that you could get away, you could migrate, like the, the pilgrims and whatnot, the, the adventurers jump on a friggin' boat and, and come to this land. And it, it's, there's no place left to go. There's no, if you can get away, you, there's no place to, 
to go. Well, you know, well uh, the, if the that people, were the case, then we wouldn't have 60 million people on the move right now. Well, that's United, they, they United keep States, moving. They I keep understand, moving. but the United States is in a wonderful position when they can say, well, I don't want you to stay that's away. Right. That's but right. we happen to be land connected um, to, to those regions. So the 30 million of those 50 million are heading this way. And, th and they're going to come because That's, you can yes. still walk, you can still move. So, so, and there again, I think you're, you're making my case that that's the same. You, you will try to go somewhere else <laughs> and, and you will physically do that because we, we can't, you know, it, it doesn't really matter that, that. Well, that, I think, know, and Marco, correct me, but Marco's point is, that that always has led to conflict when when migration and people mm -hmm. clash cultures clash and yes. now we can see it coming and so the future is how is that going to be resolved different than it has been resolved in the past which is always conflict violence well I, therefore, we have not ever resolved it. Right, we haven't yet. We haven't. Yeah, I, I agree. Marco we haven't saying, resolved it. So well, we again, can, we can it's see still the this same. coming now. <laughs> right, but it, but it's still the same. But it, but it's one event. But we're talking at different scales, I think, because the first humans who migrated out of Africa, they had from the from the perspective of a kind of human animal world, you know, uh, binary. Uh, they had an entire world to expand uh, into. Uh, once settlement occurred, uh, and once enough of the world was settled, then you you couldn't have that kind of movement into virgin world, so to speak. Uh, you could you could only encounter other other humans, uh, and so you know that that's a singular event, even if it repeats itself through multiple cycles across different civilizations, places and times from you know, ancient Rome to modern America. Uh, but but where, where does it end, I guess? What's the end kind of process or the end state that that, that, that that resolves at? Because you get to a certain kind of saturation point, right? There's ideas ecologically, economically about the carrying capacity of the earth and uh, you know, a lot of thinking around how that could be managed uh, from a even from just a te technocratic point of view. Um, but I think the question is not yet resolved whether it can be managed. And I think that's the stress, you know, the, the, you know, the, wide, the, the, the widespread, the global stress that, that we're experiencing. We generally, humans, are experiencing now is that there is nowhere to go other than space other than outer space uh and you know if Elon musk and bezos and these folks have their way there will be some kind of commercial transit uh it'll start maybe just like sloterdijk described describes as this process of discovery of exploration colonization appropriation etc which then turns into a commercial kind of traffic uh situation which is what we have now on the globe, but it would be extended to these other worlds. And um, I mean, that to me seems like, I mean, plausible, a plausible escape valve for a very few people. <laughs> yeah, but, but what, where's the difference to what it was before? You've simply expanded the notion of the space that you're going to occupy, that's all. But you have the same problems with the same motives and the same drivers with and and I will guarantee you, following that line of of projection as is, it's being put on, with the same problems because we're just going to take our shit with us, and we're just going to spread it out somewhere else. And so now we've got a, a more virt partly virtual and partly real in outer space realm where we're just going to take our unresolved crap and spread it around. So we we haven't changed anything. We've just we're just doing it in another place. We don't. Yeah. Our America is now outer space. Okay. And rather, yeah, rather it's Game of Thrones or Star Wars. Whatever. Yeah, but but, <laughs> but you're still it's the same thing. <laughs> as far as I'm, I can thing. see it. 
you know, uh, because we haven't, we haven't figured out that that was, and I thought all along, this is what I, this is, this is the other side of what I keep reading in the, in the, in the old Testament is somebody's they're trying to tell you it's possible to figure it out, but not that way. And, and, but we like to do it that way. And if we, I'm just saying, theoretically, possibly, if we had a different attitude to how we address it, even if it's just a consumption, you know, we all know that if we consumed less, it would be better for the planet. Well, we don't consume less. We know it would be a good idea. We know it would be helpful for our children and our grandchildren, but we don't do it. Okay, well, I'm as guilty as anybody else. I'm not saying, well, you guys are all screwed up and I'm okay. But but we haven't learned yet that it's that it's probably a good thing to say no to oneself once in a while. We we haven't learned that yet. We've got a million years of human history and haven't figured out the really, in my estimation, or I'm slowly coming to the realization, the simplest of things. You know, and so whether you whether you clothe it in a in a technological garb or whether it's just Roman chariots on on cobblestone street, I, I'm not I'm not getting the difference. That's I think I think that's the that's where I'm coming up. So I'm not seeing where there's a there's a real there difference isn't. there yet. There isn't. I agree. Well, with one, one other person on the planet <laughs> agrees with me <laughs> in that regard because. <laughs> Because everybody, because everybody says, well, that's different. No, it's still us doing the shit we always did, and yeah. and we're doing it but badly. And you know, we and we're really good at owning up to. Oh yeah, we screwed that one up, but what, what, watch me the next time. You know, I'll screw it up again. <laughs> and, and I do. You know, that's that's kind of the the story of my life. I keep screwing up the same simple things, and and, and it takes forever until it dawns in me that like. Uh, oh, that's what it. Oh, and then you realize it was no. There's no. There's no magic involved. It's. It's sometimes it's a simple. Just let. Just let. Really, just let it go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> My mother used that's to tell me that all the time. I only now I'm starting to understand what she meant. <laughs> that's, the, that. that's the Zen state. Where yeah. you just let it go by. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I believe that as well. That's yeah, like that's the, the guys state are going with their empty themselves. They're getting that block out of the way. <laughs> so it just goes in one ear and out the other. You know, that, that, I think that's that's really helpful. You know, mm. and, and, and I I have found, or I believe, or I suspect, and that's my my hidden agenda. The porch sitting can lead to that. <laughs> but there's so, always an. an Back to the beginning with Marco sitting uh, brooding by himself. But what happens when the guy comes up behind you and, and for some reason he doesn't like you in your little world and he gives you an elbow. And then, mm -hmm. and then you being in sort of Zen, just, and that pisses him off more. <laughs> and now he thinks he's got a patsy. Yeah. I, I, and this goes to what you said, Ed. It one one person can figure out their own little thing, but you don't. But there's always there's always this. Sooner or later, there's conflict, and we haven't figured out. Some people, oh, conflict resolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, but as as <laughs> in the aggregate. We, we haven't come to a better, in the end, and Pascal said this like 500 years ago, when push comes to shove, force rules. And we haven't figured out a better solution than force, meaning right. power but and, and of violence. Right. And the operative word in there is we. I, you know, I can Agreed. get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can get it. You can get it. Michael can get it. All of us can do this. We can all individual. This is this is another thing I wrestle with. We can all individuate. That's great. So now we got a whole. But how do we get these individuated individuals to we? <laughs> and that's and that to me is the, the that's the next level. 
that's the that's that's really saging the whole thing to get them to weave. And 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 that's going that to me is the bigger challenge than whether or not I can put a car in space. But then it's no it just isn't any fun then because then <laughs> you, Well seriously, if it doesn't matter if we're all the same then you know No 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 that's what I'm saying. Hey, that the whole that's the that's no 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 that's not what I mean. The thing that I like most about my family, even though they aggravate me to no end, is that we're all different, but we still have a we. We have a we that is this this conglomerate, messy thing of differentness. But it's a but it's a thing, but it's not a thing. It's like the rainbow, you know, to use Lynn Clare's, you know, metaphor that she brought. It really is. It's so we're not all the same, but we're still. We enough that that we can we tolerate each other and we accept the the other shortcomings. We even try subtly to get the other to change <laughs> instead of changing ourselves. You know, we all do that. That that's fine. But but at that moment, we're not being actively and openly aggressive to one another, and so that maintains a certain. You can be you can be aggressive. Without being violent, that's correct. I agree, hundred percent. Still with you. I'm still with you on that. So, and we all and we recognize that in the others, but but there's still, you know, I'm I'm not looking for a an endpoint of stasis. I, I I kind of enjoy that 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 brewing, bubbling, whatever cauldron like affair. But it's still, I can envision a cauldron. That it's bubbling in. Say, so, yeah, I've got, and it's it's just kind of slotted. I would call it a sphere, and you know, most cauldrons were bubble-like, and that's okay. But you know, and it and it is. Well, that was that, the, that was the the theory sort of of America is that we're a melting pot. Yeah. All these people come in, right. and everybody can, and 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 that's part of America's attractiveness. But something happened. And I think it is social media. It's that it's just there's you know people are just going bananas, <laughs> uh, you know, with their anger and their mm -hmm. vitriol and and what you're talking about with the family. Yes, and and I think your question is how do how do you expand how do you, that? Yeah, how do you scale that? that the, Marco had mentioned well, it's a matter of scale. I agree, but I, I think I think we need to scale from from a different perspective, perhaps, or from a different starting point, or or an additional starting point, if you if you will. Well, it is a matter. Slaughterdeck's starting point was the mother and child, mm -hmm. that's, and then that's the human starting point. I agree and with him, even so though that's I haven't the, met that's, him. <laughs> that's right, the primary. Right. right. I mean, how brilliant do you have to be to figure that one out? No? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a useful reminder. You know that. I, I agree. And I agree. And I, I'm willing. And I would have agreed with him probably more if he had said it in 50 words instead of 500. Yeah, that's <laughs> All right. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a horse to flog on another. Know, that's okay. We that's flogged right. that horse. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we we get you know these expanded spheres uh -huh. uh, and family tribe tribe seems to be neurologically uh the optimum scale for uh -huh. humans uh but tribe is not the reality of a planetary world uh, so tribal works to a point uh, it works if it is in, contained within larger structures that mediate the relationships between tribes because uh, otherwise they, they na naturally enter into, into conflict well, I think the I think the, the the analogy and we have a working model in its professional sports they're very competitive and they're tribal but it doesn't they have rules and it doesn't break out in violence mm-hmm well, you haven't watched but the hockey keeps, finals it, here, and the what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're watching the Stanley Cup of that particular sport. Hockey is a high. 
I, okay. I'm okay. talking. I'm talking. You know, yeah, a normal basketball, sport. Football, football. Okay. Baseball. You know, there's there's 32 owners in football, and they're it, it. You know, they're all billionaires, and they got they can they got their teams and their coaches, so they've got their little tribes, and it's very it's extremely competitive, but it it doesn't break out into murder and <laughs> you know things like it's a, it's a system that works but it's like the the extreme only a certain number of of athletes can participate and and they're the cream of the crop and they will find you anywhere in the world if you can play basketball they'll find you anywhere in the world and there's only like i don't know 1,500 uh, people who can play at that level. Uh, so I think there, there is a model, and it's, it's professional sports. Well, so, no, I, the, the only reason I, I, I want to disagree is the, the, the tribe's not the team. The tribe's the fans. And if you fall, and this is something you guys probably wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't see, but the problem that, that we have here in Europe, the European um, championships are going to come up next next year, I think it is. Halfway, but it doesn't matter. It, soccer. It's, in soccer. And so the hooligans from England, we, they, they, they cordoned <laughs> off. Yeah, they cordoned off Corsica as a prison during the last World Cup to put the British hooligans and the other hooligans because they had to separate them off. They couldn't play in certain places because the people are simply, they simply come to, to fight. And, and in the champion league, when, when Dortmund was playing from, which is a German team was playing against Manchester, they had every policeman in Manchester was out and they loaded up all the paddy wagons because of the violence. And it's amongst the fans. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the teams are okay and they play and somebody wins and somebody loses, but, but the tribe, that, the thing that's driving the tribe is a whole different thing and it turns very violent very fast and it's a real violence. Mm -hmm. So, and, well, and, that, and, and, and that mean, all of you conformists of in America who follow our team and wave your colors and go, woo, 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 that's fine. You know, over here, people are bashing their heads in and I'm going, well, that has nothing to do with anything. There's, there are soccer games that take place in the German league where it has been forbidden for a team to even sell tickets to the game. They have to play in front of empty stadiums because they don't want the people around. That's the punishment. You get to play to nobody. <laughs> well, um, but this is part of like his, the history of Europe compared to the yeah, history. Of yeah. The well, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, cool I mean, part of what occurred in the United States is we, we got this kind of capitalist consensus so it would just be bad business for that to be going on here. Mm -hmm. Part of the, the point of the NFL, the major leagues, NBA, etc. all the owners, whether or not their team wins or loses, most of them win in the end uh, because th the franchises are, are successful and the league as a whole is successful. And they have a common set of rules. Uh, they've figured out how to divide the spoils. Um, they've figured out how to market. It's, it's a kind of a coalition uh, association of, you know, marketing, um, um, you know, operations uh, that, you know, share their branding and um, are, you know, also have a, a larger social function in, in terms of scythe directing, channeling off that tribal uh, well, tension. Well, yeah, Ed, mm -hmm. can you think about or articulate the difference? Why is it in America that you can have somebody with a Green Bay Packer jersey and they're in the same bar and somebody with a Pittsburgh mm -hmm. Steelers and there's that tremendous rivalry, but they, it doesn't break out into mayhem and violence. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, 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 I, 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 per, I personally think it's because Americans are conformists. And so that's, it's a socially unacceptable thing to do, so you don't do it. Now, it's socially unacceptable to do that here, but it happens to be, for example, that culturally the Brits are much more physically violent than, say, the Germans are. No. They're historical. Yes, they all they are. 
they certainly are. The, the, uh, the Brits are the most aggressive Europeans here. You mean in terms of uh, like... I mean in terms of physical violence. Hooli hooliganism, yeah. Hooliganism. Look, look, look at their foreign policy and the military. Who's always the first person to go, oh, yeah, let's go bomb the shit out of those people. Let's retaliate against Syria because uh, we think something might have happened. Look at this, uh, the Scripple thing. I don't know if that even got into your news over there, but a double agent was apparently gift gassed, didn't die, survived an attack from a, an, a, from a lethal gas that only could have been produced in Russia. Well, he survived it, number one, so I'm guessing it's not the gas. Um, the attempted murder of a citizen is um, a criminal act as far as I know. And so the Prime Minister, Theresa May of England, levied sanctions against Russia for attacking the Soviet Union and threatened threatened nuclear response if it didn't if it didn't uh, settle down so i don't know that sounds pretty aggressive to me well that's i it, yeah and that and that's seems, every day yeah it, it seems like <laughs> that america's has figured out how so far, but we're not nearly as crowded. And like I said, we haven't been here as long. Uh, right. but, but, but you compensate for it in other areas. That's why you have such a high, um, what's why you have such a high murder rate? Oh, you have a high murder rate and you have, uh, you know, death by guns is, you know, what are what, eight, eight policemen, eight, eight deaths in, in England by policemen. They, they shot eight people. Well, sure. the citizens kill each other. The police don't have to do it. In the United States, the police take over that, that job. And so but, they kill us. But we're, we're per portrayed in the media as being almost uh, heathens here in the United States. Well, in certain regards, you are. <laughs> when well, you have, you're well, not we, the most violent society on the face of the planet, but on the Western industrialized, you know, that scale of, oh, we're so nice that we like to portray, you know, there are many, many more violent deaths per 100,000 in the United States oh, than there are in England or I, Germany. I, I know all that. And so yeah. that, that, so that's you don't beat up the sports guy, you <laughs> go home and shoot somebody else. But somehow it gets out somewhere. What you don't put out here, you put out there. Because we, I think we have a certain like contingent of violence on all of us that has to get dissipated in some way. And if yeah, and if you don't do it here, you'll do it somewhere else. So we find avenues that <laughs> socially acceptable would be the well, wrong well, word, but you know what I mean, that we can think we can get away with in some way. Well, you're, you're talking Freud, you know. No, well, he, he, he wasn't a dumb guy. <laughs> he, was very, he was very smart. He, was very <laughs> he, he smart. was insightful in many ways. <laughs> you know? that, and he, that, does, he does provide us with a little bit of a toolbox so we can at least use to think about some of these things. And then you go, oh, okay, well, I can see where this compensation comes in. And that um, well, makes a certain amount of sense. And so what, but he also said there are, there are ways to mitigate that. As well, well, uh, well he, we, we tend not to read those parts of it. <laughs> because, because that would mean we might have to do something with ourselves. But it, se it seems in this country, though, at, at the higher levels of social class, we've figured it out it, it, for the most part. <laughs> no, Marco? Well, I, I, well, well because uh, these, yeah, these, we, very, but, these very rich people... And if, if you're a fan in this country and, and go to the stadium, you got to have some, some disposable income. <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah. cheap. It's not, it's not right. cheap. But it's, it's not, not but, I mean, all right, here's the, here's the, where we get back to, to scale. Returning to Sloterdijk, going from mother, child, family unit, tribal mm -hmm. unit, community, these wider and wider, wider spheres. And we have the nation state and, you know, transnational alliances, Europe to, a certain extent, but um, that level of solidarity amongst the ownership of enterprise uh, is no longer contained within the nation state, right? So it's moved into a, another sphere, the global sphere, like the, the commercial spheres. And we get this layer 
of human beings, human networks, um, who have affiliation with each other, solidarity with each other, because they're playing the same game. Uh, and then you have everybody else who's not allowed in the le- in, in in those leagues. Not if not not allowed, because they'll find you if you're good. Mm-hmm. If, if you're able to make money, if you're able to feed the the productive cycle, you know th- there there are all kinds of avenues for you. Uh, this is what the edu- educational institutions are about. These are you know they're conveyor belts uh, for you know producing good capitalists and. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I'm not, uh, I, I want to hasten to, um, soften, uh, the, the kind of edge on, on that critique because it's, it's not, it's not something other than hum, humans being human on, on some level. And I think that is part of what you're saying, Ed and, and, and Mark, mm-hmm. uh, violence is a potential of our being that expresses itself when conditions um, require it. Um, and not that conditions necessarily require violence, not that that's the best way to respond to those conditions, but that's the programming. And I think that that's not just human, of course, that's life. Uh, other than, I, I think, most plants, uh, which feed directly on the sun, life feeds on life. And so as humans, we're, we're doing the same thing. And so the question of how identity is created, constructed, how world is built, how worlds are built around our identities, uh, and where we draw the lines of, of who we are and who we affiliate with, uh, that to me is the, the kind of salient question, uh, because it's, it's easy to associate with your family. Well, <laughs> let me take that back. Um, but... Generally speaking, that's that's kind of a, a natural, normal scale for humans to affiliate um, with uh, larger communities, etc. Even Sloterdijk makes this argument: the nation state, for a time, provided a kind of common home, uh, and part of how that is effectuated is through the media. So, if you have a national media that you know where everybody's listening, watching the same news, getting the same story. Uh, has the same leader leadership and representatives, et cetera, to look up to. It doesn't have to be a democracy. It could be any kind of political form, but you have that container. You have, you know, the, 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 part, the part about the melting pot is that it's contained. There's an inside and an outside. And I think we've moved beyond that in our, in our historical situation. Uh, and that, you know, the, the idea of humanity, um, it may be the most important idea that, you know, that we have to work on, um, you know, because we, we will need that level of global planetary solidarity in, in order to stabilize our, our overall situation. Um, but it may also, in, in, you know, be, uh, and this is part of, I think, also Sloterdijk's argument and part of the more co- the argument in general being voiced by conservative uh, voices all over the world, it may be that that human idea itself is experienced as um, uh, an imposition, you know, on other kinds of identities that are more local, uh, but that are stronger and more meaningful. Uh, because the human idea doesn't come out of nowhere. You know, it comes from European philosophy. It comes from, it comes, you know, it, as part of a historical process that includes the, the polit- uh, political um, political events uh, and histories and grievances. And um, I don't want to, I mean, I'm not trying to argue against humanism or for tran- post-humanism or, or transhumanism, but more to say that, more to, I think, delineate what the, the question might be and it has to do with where we find where where and how we are able to create spheres that sustain a life our lives uh, and i th- perceive that that's becoming h- harder to do uh 
pr pretty much everywhere, it seems. I mean, uh, other than for, you know, the, the very elite and very privileged. Um, but but for, for most people, it, it's, um, it's not given anymore where your container is. Uh, and, you know, where to find your place. Uh, and, and that becomes a, you know, for, it becomes a personal challenge. Like, well, that, that's something that, I have to... that creates anxiety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it can be, anxiety can be understood to, conceptually as fear. Anxiety being a general uh, discomfort. You can't put your finger on what it is exactly. And a fear is a specific threat. And, and so there's a general anxiety and people are targeting specific targets saying, that's why I feel so shitty is that person or that thing or something. When in fact, it's not, we got to get back to Zen. <laughs> so it's the human condition. It is. Yeah, and I don't, yeah. I don't condition. think. Part of part of the discussion since I've been following y'all seems to think that we're, that we're evolving out of that. I don't see that. Like Ed says, we're still the human condition is the human condition it hasn't changed. Like Ed said, for thousands of years. But I do think, and, and this is where we we probably differ. And this is somewhere between what I think I hear Marco saying and, and, and what you're saying. I do think one thing that we are developing or that we are evolving towards is a greater ability to deal with that than we had before. Better weapons? No. No. <laughs> better minds. We do have the better weapons. But I do think that we have this, but this is what I, un, this is what I understand. For example, Gapes are you, name you've heard bantered about here a lot. But my understanding of what he talks about with integral consciousness is a more general realization of we are all in the same boat kind of thing. And we, are, we have been wrestling with this for a long time. And we've tried a number of ways to resolve it. And the recognition that we haven't resolved it is a huge step forward. Because that recognition, that recognition has, ne has never come. And up until now, there has really, it's really been, there have been individuals who have, but let's say on, the, on a broader scale of humanity, that realization has, has not readily been available. It's been available, but not in the way that, that, that it's easily acceptable. I, when, you know, when I read old myths, I read them differently than probably most of the people around me do because I think they're telling us, you, you can do this. It, it is possible for this to happen. <clears throat> and, and we haven't done it yet and we haven't figured it out yet and we haven't made that step yet, but there, we have been told, and, or we keep being told, that it, but it can be done. I, I see this, this next step as, as a potential, unrealized, of course, as all potentials are, or they wouldn't be potentials, they'd be realities. But, but it can be resolved. The mere fact, the mere fact that we recognize I don't have to bomb the shit out of them. I could actually sit down. It would take me forever. Uh, to me, the end of the Vietnam War was, a, was, a, was a, an excellent example of this. Militarily, you can't kill an idea. And at some point, even, even the most powerful military on earth said, I can't do this. And so they, they argued over the size of the negotiating table for months in Paris. You know, how big and what size and how many corners and whatnot. And, and what fascinates me about this is that they talked. They, they actually... I don't care whether they all sat down there with, with, with measuring sticks or whatnot and protractors and what, but they talked. They talked until they decided this table will, I think, 
work for now. And then they sat at it and talked. Nobody, as a result of it, nobody, it's not nobody, but ideally speaking, nobody's killed while they're talking. Just talk. Talk it out. What aggravates most people about German politics is its, its tendency to want to find consensus. We all know that'll drive everybody batshit insane unless you're willing to bring enough patience to simply talk about it. Because while you're talking about it, yes, the problem's still there. Yes, it's still going on. But you are a step closer to a potential resolution. For, before you weren't. When you were fighting, no resolution at all. Because we know that never solves anything. We've got enough history to prove that conflict isn't the resolution. So we can at least talk. And we've learned over the course of our human history to talk to each other in different and I think better ways, just like we do now. We, you know, we, we, we three probably don't agree on anything, but it's amazing how much we have in common and how well we can get along because we're well, willing to listen. We're willing to express. We know that I'll be heard if I say something. And that, that is something that we don't find generally. That's what leads to conflict in families or even in slightly larger social groups. Well, we can. We, we, if I change my attitude towards the other, if I actually took seriously something uh, like the golden rule and said, okay, don't do to them what you wouldn't want to do to you. That's a huge step forward if I can actually do it. If I actually put my mind to it and try, I'm going to fail a thousand times. And if I don't give up and keep on doing that, I do think it gets better because then I'm willing to at least sit down and say, okay, tell me again what it is that you have to say. Okay, you're full of shit. We're going to go off. <laughs> but okay, this time, well, it just kind of stinks. Let me think about that some more. And that's, that's the progress. It's long, it's slow, it's painful, but it's not necessarily violent. There are aspects of violence in it. There, is a, there are aspects of aggression in it when somebody tries to present their case, make their case, prove their point or whatever. I understand all of that. But, but we are also, here comes Mr. Freud again, we're also sublimating a lot of that, let me beat you over the head with a club until we get this sorted out. And I think that's a good thing, personally. Hmm. And that, that's where I think that there's some kind of a change in the air or that we, and that this potential is there. Because more and more people, I, I, I do believe, realize the way we're doing it isn't working. I just, just this afternoon, I read, for example, because we got this big thing with Russia all the time because they're, they're, they're so aggressive. I don't, I don't know where. They're not the one that put 5,000 troops on, on their border. We did. They're the only one in the, in the militarized world that reduced their military expenditures last year. <clears throat> Go figure but they're the bad guys. And 70% of the German population would like for our government to at least talk to the Russians. They didn't say drop the sanctions. They didn't say change it. They just said, go talk. And I think take that as a very positive sign. Why don't we sit down and talk? Why don't we ask, where, where is your real problem? What is actually going on. Do you really want to take over the world or do you just want to be left alone? We don't know because we've been told it is somewhere. I don't know what they think. I don't really care what they think. If they're willing to talk, I'm willing to listen. I'll sit down with you too. And if we can, if we can do that's that's to me is a huge step forward because it's, it's at least allowing for the possibility of a different kind of potential resolution. And that might be the only thing that's going on that is different than it was before. And I'm not convinced of it, but I just think that at the moment. That's that's my working hypothesis. I think you're I think you're speaking about the art of the deal. Well, <laughs> it, uh, wait, I, I yeah, I, I understand that, except the art of the deal is from the worst deal maker in the world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he's the one that told you I don't know how to do it. But it is in a sense the art of the deal. It is. It is in that sense. I, I, don't, I don't argue with that, that side of it because I do believe that everyone who is sitting in there probably does have some interests that they want to. Yeah. Ah. It's sitting down it's and, and some working out. 
Yeah. Right. But Everybody. it all depends on how 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 high you rate them on your own scale of necessity. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I well, think it's... I, I, hold, hold, hold one sec. Uh, the art of the deal is one way of phrasing it, right? That mm -hmm. has to do with a transactional kind of uh, negotiation amongst uh, self-interested parties, right? Mm -hmm. This is come. There's a uh, framework implied uh, in that in that formula. Um, I want to offer maybe a broader focus, uh, which could include deal making, could include all of those kinds of things that um, you know some might do, uh, but might be able to more account for what is really kind of at play or what is at stake in the conversation in process in that talking rather than fighting it out this comes back to a couple you know some of the posts in the forum uh the est magicians but tj's um thoughts on uh culture and what is i think happening in that process of talking things out because it's not just at the it's not just at a table like there's a conversation happening at the cultural level uh, that doesn't just involve you know, wor you know, words uh, to, to figure something out, but involves all of you know culture, art, music, um, demonst protests, news. I mean, all of this is a way that we are communicating on some level. And in order for conflicting parties to come together, they already have to share some kind of, even if it's very ill-defined, even if it's very kind of unstable, some kind of sense of culture. For us to talk, we have to be able to hear and understand each other, uh, translate potentially between different languages, if not actually different languages, different um, mindsets, frameworks within a language. Uh, and, and what the end result of that would be is a shared life world. There's a German, uh, what's the yeah. German word for this? Umwelt. Right, um, Umwelt. There, there's a Lebenswelt, which is the life world, literally, and there's an Umwelt, which is the wor world which is around me. So I think I meant Lebenswelt. Then you meant Lebenswelt, but it has an Umwelt uh, implication as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what is the, what's the potentiality here? I think, uh, I, I think it has to do with creating a culture within which conflicts can be resolved uh, you know, because the participants in the culture share some common reference points. Uh, and then you can have a conversation. Um, well, the, just jump in quickly. Isn't the common reference point back to your slaughter dike, mother and child? Everybody, I mean, that's the beginning. And everybody, no matter the culture, no matter the country, every of course, there are exceptions, but most people share that bond of mother and mm -hmm. child, the beginning. Everybody wants to take care of mom and the baby. That's, that's the yeah, beginning. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, that's why when we see pictures of, you know, Palestinian children or yeah. you know, Syrian refugees, mm -hmm. Uh, the chill it's the it's the images of the children and the images of the families it's that... the biggest hook there is mm -hmm. so that's the that's that's the point you want to get the your planet to is to every and everybody does already that's that's mm -hmm. kind of wired in mm -hmm. but we don't acknowledge it in those moments when we need to i i think this is also part of what slaughter Knight is saying or or, or is trying to say to, as long as it is that that is a starting point and we do share that and if we would think about that from time to time we would know that and and i'm back back again to what, what marco said how do how do i scale that to an umwelt i'm not even going to get to the lebensvelt yet that is actually beyond me right now because my umwelt is 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 very big and it's very chaotic and it's very 
Uh, media determined that it wasn't before. I, I do have a lot of things impinging and flowing in upon me that I have to deal with that cause me stress and anxiety, but I have to come to terms with it. My, my predecessors and my ancestors didn't have to. Right? That, is, that is qualitatively changed. But that I have to deal with things that are out. That's just the umbel I have to deal with. And what's necessary for me is to figure out or to structure my Lebensbelt in such a way that I come to terms with that. So that I can interact with others who are looking to get their Lebensbelt so structured that they can come to terms with it. Because if we don't have that, then it's very hard to start communicating to one another. It'll break down very quickly. But if I recognize that you, you're breaking down very quickly because of whatever, then I can, I can react accordingly. And I don't have to say, well, he didn't get his shit together. Let's get rid of him. No, no, give him another chance or try it again or try it a different way. Those are, those are options I have because I know that it, can, it cannot work. I, I know uh, because I've been exposed to enough of it, maybe because I've read enough or I'm an egghead enough to realize that's a, prob that's a probability, not a possibility. So I shouldn't be surprised when it doesn't work. So okay, well, okay, well, let's go. We'll have to go at this again. And you know, the, and to me, the virtue that is in the most short supply in the modern world is patience. We we just we need tons. Of, we need a lot. You know, the guy sitting on the porch isn't patient. The guy sitting out in front of his shop isn't patient because he's not, he doesn't have all of this pressing in on him that he has to consciously deal with. He's, he's finding his, his zone, you know, his Zen zone. But I got all this other shit I got to deal with, and I need patience to deal with that. I don't have a lot of it. I'm, I'm cultivating more of it as I get older, but part of that is simply reaction. I can't react as quickly as I used to. You know, so nature kind of forces a little bit of patience on me, but I realize patience is probably the, you know, the resource number one. Hmm. If you, you know, if you, could, if you could market patience, shit. You wouldn't have to worry about whether you got on the rocket ship to Mars. <laughs> I don't want to go, by the well, way. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is part of what culture does, though. I mean, yeah. It, it yeah. gives you um, a reason to wait. That, that's a good way to put it, Mark. I, I agree. It gives you a reason. Yeah, that's, I, you know, I was very impressed with, with TJ's idea of culture. I'm glad you brought it up. Gives you a reason to wait. Isn't that hope? Uh, I, I would certainly think it certainly plays a whole role in that. And, but it's not just, no, it is that's also, the, that's this, the, is, this is a both and kind of, this, that's really a both and. Hope it's like, if it, and the downside is, if I sit here and do nothing, things will get better. Yeah. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. No, that's, no. that's 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 the rub against patience. Well, well, hold on. How do humans learn patience? Like, yeah, this is the thing. I, I my idea of patience is I will I will do something, knowing tomorrow. damn well it's not going to work the first time. I I just know it, and I can't be discouraged by the fact that it is because I know going in it probably won't. Now I should probably be, according to the self help gurus, much more optimistic, and it would probably turn out better and that's like eh, no <laughs> chances are very good it ain't going to work the first time but but i know that that's okay it's all right that doesn't mean that it's not going to work that's the, the hope it's not it it could work it might work and i might try it 10 times i might try it 100 times and it might not go and i may even give it up and say okay isn't going to work but i also have found in my life that 20 years later i find myself doing the same thing and I do it 25 times or 30 times instead of the 20 times. Because I've simply realized, okay, sometimes you just have to stick it out longer than you thought. I don't know how long it goes. And so you well, try that, it. That's part of, that's part of the, the paradox, too, is that knowing when to quit and knowing when to persist. And, yes. And, and that's contextual and individual and you got to figure yes. all that out and yes. and but it's and not absolute it's not i did it once and i know how it works 
I did it once and that's how it worked that time. That, that's the difference. I might have to do it again. Knowing well, full well, this was my experience then. And it's not a good one for me at this the second time, but I may have to do it again. I, I this, this was my experience with my children. No, no. What didn't work the first time might have worked the, the hundredth time or not. So, some things never worked at all. And I and and when I do get a chance to sit in a portion, well, why did I ever think about trying that? That was a bad idea to begin with. I didn't realize it was a bad idea at the time. How could I? I thought that was okay. So that's what I did. All right. All right. Good. Well, I, I can't well, change I think, that. I think the, the, one of the best teachers of patience is our children. Our children. Yeah, they, <laughs> they really are. You know, and if you want an extra dose of it, I know you don't have one. Try a grandchild. <laughs> I thought they were supposed to be great. No, well, they are. But I went through this one. But they're all. Every human being is so unique. You yes. know, I can I can look at my grandchild and I can go genetically speaking. You know, we look in you know, a blonde hair, blue eyes, or whatever. But I can see when this kid's doing something. I can I can very often see my wife's father. Because that's what he would have done. And I see, I see my daughter and I see her sister and I see my wife. And I, and, and the really, let me tell you, jaw droppers are when you see yourself <laughs> and you realize, I know exactly where that comes from, why he's doing that right now. He's looking me right. And he gets this, he gets this look on his face too, where he goes, and he starts looking at me, and I'm going, Jesus, get that mirror out of here. <laughs> because I have to think he knows. <laughs> now, he's too young to have. I, I was like, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's, a, it's a real eye-opener because you see these. They're not just physical traits. They're, it's, it's how you hold the fork. It's, it's how you turn your head and react to what somebody else is saying. You know, it, 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 and and that to me is the is the real eye opener because I went into this old grandparent thing just like you said. Oh, grandkids are great. Those will be, you know, this is a walk in the park. I got them three days a week, and this guy's teaching me more than I ever thought I was going to learn in ways I never imagined. You know, he's a he's a he's a real pistol, the little the little fellow. <laughs> <laughs> but. Okay, that's you know you got you are where you are and you deal with what you got to deal with and and that's 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 fine and, and I enjoy that, but you can tell where it's coming from. Yeah. I want to so, bookmark a couple of topics, uh, mm -hmm. just a couple of ideas. We don't have to go into them. Um, I think I should go have some food or something now. See what else I need to do today. But uh, one I wanted to bring in the name of um, another German philosopher, Jürgen Habermas. Does, not a big oh, fan yeah. of Peter Sloterdijk, uh, but Habermas uh, wrote um, a book called The Theory of Communic Communicative Action. More than one book, I think it was... It's two volumes. Two, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, one of the ideas in, in this uh, theory, theory, theory of action is that communication is a form of action, a form of making things happen yes. in the world. There's a pragmatic, um, like an understanding of of uh, communication dynamics in there, but there's also an ethics in there. Uh, in order for people to communicate, they have to they have to make certain assumptions, is what Habermas says, around who he, who they are, what the nature of the situation is, and what they could assume from the other. So in order for a communication event to happen, there have to be some kind of ground of, of ethics and some kind of ground of structure. Now, I, I know one can argue with Habermas around how he constructs his particular model. It's particularly, it's more rationalistic, let's say, uh, than, you know, other ideas or theories of communication that would include, say, some, something like magical and mythical narrative types of, um, he really focuses more on the procedural, I think, aspects of, of how communication occurs. Nonetheless, when we look at culture as a as a historical process, as something that emerges through 
multitudes of interactions among among people, everything from sharing meals to fighting love to um, art, uh, we could see, I think, much in the way analogously that in, say, agriculture, you go from the very beginnings of understanding the principle of how a seed works and the notion that if you plant it in a particular place and water it, and yeah. from there you can develop a full you know, global agricultural system. It all starts from there. Similarly, I think with culture and with, with communication is that it, 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 it involves some very simple principles, but many varieties of, of techniques and methods and skills that are learned over time through trial and error, through adaptation to different environments, through experiences with different contexts, different uh, genetics, seeds, plants, etc. I think part of what could we could my posit is, is, is happening on this human scale from, you know, the emergence of humans into this transhuman moment, mm -hmm. if, if you want to go there, is a um, potentially uh, a, a learning process. Like we're learning how to communicate. We're learning how to uh, have a culture, how to be individuals at the same time that we're collectives, you know, how to be local at the same time that, that we're global. But we have to develop the understanding for that to for that to be able to work as a kind of coherent whole. And whereas we may have mastered that in smaller domains, we we haven't mastered it at the the um, in the planetary domain. Uh, and I presume that I I even if we did, we'd eventually end up in some kind of conflict with an you know alien species from another planet, and then we'd have to figure out how to communicate with them. Uh, and establish some kind of common culture so that we weren't destroying each other. I mean, something like that would be the kind of recurring, you know, principle on a cosmic scale. But the task before us here now, as the people we are, would be to communicate better, uh, to understand each other and ourselves better. And, um, and so I resist the, 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 the idea that it's the same because agriculture now is not the same as agriculture 10,000 years ago, even though the principle of putting a seed in the ground, watering it, and then harvesting it, it and, and that's the same. But we're much more sophisticated now around the production of food. And arguably, we're a lot more sophisticated around the production of culture because what else is mass media but you know industrial mm -hmm. culture production? Uh, you know, it's just that as with industrial food products, industrial cultural products tend to make us sick uh, and, you know, not produce the most healthy human environments or, or you know, um, the, the most healthy human interiors. So um, I, w I want to keep thinking about, the, about how culture, um, how we create culture. Uh, how we create good culture. Uh, you know, what kind of culture do we want to consume? What kind of culture do we want to be a part of? Um, I don't want to be a part of Facebook culture. I left because, not because the technological interface was bad, not because I didn't want to see the people. It was because the culture as a whole w was wretched. So, you know, I, I think America is turning into this kind of toxic culture now. Um, that you know may or may not be able to um, uh, heal. Uh, it may need to find we you know as individuals. I think we may need to find our our homes in other in other spaces. And that's the you know that's partly driven by anxiety and and uh, it's partly driven by hope. Um, and it's partly driven by desire too, because I, we can envision what a good culture would be like. We can look at, you know, examples in, in small, um, more isolated types of communities, uh, like the religious communities, like uh, you know, the art, creative, artistic communities, and we can say, well, what would it look mm -hmm. like if the best parts of that were distributed more, more broadly? Um, and in a lot of ways, that's kind of what has already happened. I mean, democracy is, I think, an improvement over monarchy. Uh, and, you know, it, it emerged out of smaller experiments. 
out of smaller associations of people d devising rules for the you know the governance of their common affairs. Um, I think you know I, I would love to come. I, I don't know where, where exactly to, to wrap this up, but um, I'm uh, so uh, so. I, I guess I'm gonna try. Uh, I don't have a, a neat a, a neat question or or, or like final thought. Mm -hmm. You know, other than um, what what I perhaps what I w would like to in these cafes and in whatever we're doing, it doesn't matter to me so much if we have a specific topic or a specific reading or such, because part of what I want to cultivate is the culture of conversation, the culture of discourse, of uh, communicative ethics and action and, you know, varieties, various forms of creativity. Um, and that's, ex that, 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 that is, I, I, I experienced that as pretty hard work. Uh, mm -hmm. actually uh, and partly because the the milieu more broadly in which we're operating doesn't necessarily support what we're doing i mean it allows it it affords it the, the technologically we can do this but uh it has to almost define itself as in in, in opposition to uh the way things are going to the way things are normally done like so that differentiation process I think um, is part of what creates the, 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 the difficulty and the challenge and, uh, and the stress of it. But when you actually create culture and when you are in a, a, a space in which you can communicate and in which you can be an individual and at the same time, you know, have this kind of we uh, that, that we talked about, uh, that, that seems to be what is, des what is desired. That's, that's what I want. Uh, and, um, and so far as you're all are here, I imagine it has something to do with what you want uh, as well. Um, and it might just be a bubble too. It might not last, uh, you know, well, very long, you know, who knows? Um, but I don't know what else to do. <laughs> You know, what else would, would if, if the world is burning, if, yeah. you know, there's some kind of massive, unimaginable event on the horizon, you know, we're kind of on the event horizon, this, this yeah. singularity. Um, uh, like, what else is there to do but to create some kind of culture out of it? And that's what we do. Uh, and um, hopefully what we've done here today. I think so. Um, you know, we're always told that we we should live fully aware that we might die tomorrow. And if you do that, then your life becomes richer because this might be the last thing that I do. And it's it's the same. That's that's a scalable idea. Maybe there is some cataclysm out there that's going to end planetary existence for the humanoid part of it you know uh, the microbes will be here and things will go on and you know george carlin hit the nail on the head when he described how mother nature will just shake us off like a bad case of fleas and go on maybe that maybe that's that as well but it's not that way now and i'm here now so i have to do something with my now in light of what i would like to see if there's a then I don't know that there's a thing, but I have to act as if there were. And so, well, I'll, I'll keep doing. I, I keep doing this. And so I come back over and I spend, this is for me, time well spent again because I was able to interact with people who aren't thinking my thoughts. You know, we're not all in lock. We're not in lockstep at all. That's the great part about it. And, and for every expression that one makes, another can say, well, you know, can round it out and give it a little fuller expression and say, well, yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, the same is not, like I posted, it's not the Gleich in the Selber. There's, there's, there's degrees of sameness, that, you know, that our, you know, our language doesn't always allow for. But it's, it's kind of this. It's same enough that I can recognize it, but it's not the same thing. And it shouldn't be because there's more involved than there's other things involved. 
but there's something about it that makes it recognizable for me that I can work with it, just like the differences that come. And that, and that, what keeps me going in a lot of these things is that I, that I can see, yeah, we're, we're st- I'm still going out. We're going over the same old ground, but it's not, it's not the same old ground. We're just going over the same ground. <laughs> That's the ground over here. It looks a lot like that ground back there. <laughs> if I just focus on the ground. But what we're doing is we're still working. Okay, well, that's different. So it's it's different, but it's the same that it's different. That, that's the thing that I like about, if you put it formally, these, you know, non-binary or non-dual logics, or, you know, I, I don't know. Give it a name if it makes you feel happy, but it's the same, but it isn't. Now, that, that works for me, you see. <laughs> same, but it isn't. All right. Well, so what's my curmudgeon mentor have to say about that? There, <laughs> I think well, you might say something different. How you feeling, Marco? Better? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I haven't thought about my cold once. In the there, last you few hours. Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Hey. Hey. So I get yeah. it worked. There you go. It worked. Yeah. Well, these, these always, um, that's why I do them. They, they, yeah. they, uh, uh, they work for me and, um, I agree. So I keep coming back. Time well spent. Yeah. I mean, I think you find something that works, you, you use it. You that's, do it. I think yeah. that's, that, that's the, you know, I'll just, that's what I've been brooding on too, is what really is needed. Yeah. If it's not really needed, then why am I spending my time and energy on it? Because I don't have unlimited time and energy in this body. And so what I'm brooding on is what do I like, what need is needed, what helps, what moves things forward, what can I handle, mm-hmm. um, what do I want to have happen, question that comes up again. I mean, but you, you don't ever come up with a final answer. I mean, these are all, uh, it's all work in progress. And so it's, uh, I find it helpful to, 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 to go back over the same ground because I see things mm-hmm. that I didn't see before. And uh, that, that helps me kind of know my landscape better. All right. Gotcha. Cool. Mark, anything? In- no, I'm Good. just this, you <laughs> no know, final this, words of wisdom. This, this is this is part of my therapy. <laughs> as, as as Marco knows, I'm I'm working on my people skills. Okay, yeah, you're improving. Thanks, you're Marco. Good. You think yeah. I'm doing all right? Oh, See, yeah. those, are, those are markers. Yeah. You have to have little markers yeah. to yeah. see the improvement. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I've enjoyed this immensely. On a scale of one to ten. I think I think you're getting you're getting up to, uh, you know, that, you know, you're approaching the midpoint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just working yeah. on my pe- people skills, and I enjoy it. And as long as uh, you know, rewarded behavior will be repeated. Reward? <laughs> yes, it will. Okay, good. So you'll be here next time. Oh uh, yeah, this is this is yeah. This yeah. Yeah, you can say it. It's fun. <laughs> it, it actually is fun. All right, Ter- Terry will be here next week. He's fun. that'd be good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to to, to reading the, the piece I printed. Is there out. something to? Is there something I should read to prepare? For next I'll week? post it. Yeah, I'll share it with you. Uh, it should be on the forum. You get the. It, it, it was in the forum where we were, but if we organize a, you know, like a topic. For I got an email today sort of from you i don't the forums are all i got an email today and it sort of listed all these different things but it didn't list this per Mm -hmm. se i had to go back and find the zoom link this this was a hidden if you found mark if you found your way here tonight I don't want to hear you complaining about you can't. Well, no, you're, you're part well, of the you No, you can go on to do that. Yeah. But boy, to you get here tonight, you had, a, you had well, enough. This is the underground. 
I can this find, was, this I was can find all this, but I have to go back to uh, yeah, yeah. previous, and there's the Zoom. Yeah, didn't we all? <laughs> Good job. Good job. I'm working so on it. it. It's yeah, work in progress. You, That's all you, I'll say. Will it just appear in my email? Like Here's it's the same the link every week, though. So yeah. it's the same exact link every week. Just come back, same bat channels. Well, it'll be the top of the cafe list. It'll be. It usually cafe. is. Today it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Today so it wasn't. It will be next. It will be for next week. But little, like, if even if you don't see it, you could just bookmark it. this link, this Zoom link. You know, with the time, and just. Cl- Come back at the same time, same link, same time. This Zoom link. Mm. This application, this video conferencing application we're using, Zoom. Uh, okay. it, the, there's a link that you click to get here, right? Isn't there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so just click the same screens link. Open up, and you have to join or not join or whatever, and keep clicking buttons to get here. That link. I can the, bookmark that. Yes, you can. We're working Find on. one say somewhere, so. right click with the mouse, and there'll be the word book. I don't have a mouse. Oh, you don't have a mouse. Okay. Well, go finger your way through there. Yeah. All right. You will see it. It'll be there. I'll tag you specifically. You, you won't miss okay. it. All right. Okay. And, uh, and the PDF is up too. So, um, well, this is the only, the, yeah, this is the only forum that I'm really engaged in. Mm-hmm. So, uh, occasionally, if there's a video or something very entertaining, I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you next week. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm planning on being... support. Message mindful AI. Uh, okay. They'll get back to you uh, in in due time. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. And uh, once again, appreciate it. Okay. Have a good week, guys. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye.